So welcome to an exclusive deep dive into a world that you might be thinking a little less of in 2024, but it's a field that, while sharing a name with club and wedding DJs, operates in a universe all its own. There's club DJs, there's wedding DJs, and then there's radio DJs. So 25 years of experience across clubs, weddings, and radio myself, I feel like I'm uniquely positioned to merge these worlds. So today we're gonna uncover the secret sauce. Honestly, even though we all wear headphones and our DJ booths are wildly different, I really believe there's some programming notes that you all need to take down to elevate your DJ game, whether you're rocking a wedding dance floor or setting a vibe in a club. Let me show you some of the insider secrets on programming, promotion, and better still, rock solid playlists. I'm Aaron Trailer with The Crate Hackers. Let's start hacking. So in all my years, the thing I picked up the most was that those jocks on the radio, the ones who were the selectors for your drive home or during the morning show drive, they were masters of structured programming. They understood that their music must not only entertain, but it also has to retain listeners over time, which is calculated through precise playlists and timing. Pop quiz and see if you can comment this before I give you the answer. Go to the comment section on this YouTube video and just with one number, how many minutes do you think the average consumer listens to today's FM radio? This is from 2023 data. Any guesses? All right, time is up. A dwindling seven minutes. So now, I'm gonna venture to guess even less and less because you're in the Uber, you might be listening to FM radio there. You're cruising through your grocery store, you might be hearing FM radio. Subway sandwiches, for some reason, loves to listen to FM radio. I don't know what it is. But seven minutes per day, if you're lucky. It's all about precise playlists, and it's all about perfect timing. If we're going to only get a few minutes of your attention, it better be a heater. It better be something that just retains. You know what I mean? There must be a DJ out there who feels like their music is better and they wonder why their dance floor is empty. It's because you don't have the structured programming down. You haven't really done these precise playlists and you haven't figured out the timings. So let's try this technique. I want you to adopt the radio programming technique of day parting. Segmenting music styles and tempos to fit different times of the evening. For instance, if you start with more laid back, universally appealing tracks early in the evening and gradually build up the high energy dance numbers as the night progresses. This ensures that you have a set that evolves with the crowd's energy and keeps them engaged longer. That's a no brainer, I realize, but day parting is you don't want to go too hard in the paint during dinner time. You feel me. Just read the room. Simple. And speaking of reading the room, radio programmers are adept to understanding their audience's demographics and preferences, often relying on detailed market research and listener data to craft playlists that resonate broadly. True story, one of the very first jobs I ever had in radio was I had to go through a phone book. This was pre-internet. As an intern for a top 40 radio station, my job after school was to call any female in the phone book and try to get them to answer if these songs resonated with them. I'd be like, hey, Cindy, I know you're busy, but I'm Aaron from 93 Zoo FM, and I'm just gonna play a song hook on the phone. You tell me if you like it with a score of one to 10, right? And so I'm like, I don't know, playing TLC's Waterfalls or whatever that was back in the day, Green Day from the Dookie album. <laughs> Again, pre-internet, right? And Cindy or Betty was like, yeah, I'll give that a three, or I'm tired of that song. I've heard it before, maybe give it a rest, but you know, sometimes we get those people who would really give us this analysis, an audience analysis. And to me, that is just so important. So it also really relates to anything that you're experiencing with clubs and weddings before your event. Gather as much information as you can about the attendees. From weddings, they, it might mean speaking with a couple about the guest's age range, musical tastes. For clubs, it could be involved understanding the regular clientele or the theme of the night. Use information to tailor your set to the audience, much like a radio show that targets its listeners. I mean, if you can never get into radio, I would suggest it because it's such a treasure trove of information that they keep locked up. If you can get a part-time gig in a radio at your local station, see if you can get some of that data because honestly, I felt empowered knowing, oh, this song is a hit. 
I know for a fact that this track is going to smash because the data proves it. Betty and Cindy gave it a plus, and <laughs> I think that's just so key. More importantly, a shout out to the local FM stations. Keep radio alive. I think we could all learn something from this, the consistent branding. So radio stations are brands, each with a consistent, recognizable audio identity. You think about things like Jack FM, what do you think of playing what we want? All the 70s, 80s, and today, the light rock FM stations. It, it, this is achieved through consistent use of jingles, tags, uh, uniform styles of interactions. One of my favorite mottos working at the KISS FM radio station, it was an insider secret, but the moniker was keep it simple stupid, K-I-S-S. Keep it simple stupid. And it, it really reflected that when you listened to a KISS FM station. It was straight ahead pop. The hits, unquestionable. Researched music, light and bright jocks who don't really weigh you down with too much uh, information. We kept it simple. And I really think that could help a club DJ or a wedding DJ when you overthink things. Don't. The best advice I ever received from a radio program director was, if you can talk in 140 characters or less, then you're winning. So everything from that point on, I would talk like I was tweeting, I was tweet talking. <laughs> but again, with KISS FM, just like that, I was locked into that consistent branding. Keep it simple, stupid, keep it simple. And, and for the club DJ, this is gonna help you develop your unique DJ brand using consistent tags or drops, creating signature mixes or transitions, maintaining a consistent style and personality that can be identified by attendees. I'll admit, I'm struggling in that department myself. I've been programming hip hop radio and playing in hip hop clubs for so long, but my heart loves EDM. And I can't be in both places at once, I'm realizing. I can't be that Ferris Bueller, might be too old of a reference for some of you young ones, but the Ferris Bueller in high school was that kid who would blend in with all of the jocks or the nerds or the anybody just to try and fit in. I guess I was that DJ for so many years, just trying to be a raver and a rapper. <laughs> so if anything, Develop your unique DJ brand, no matter the venue. Let them know that they're coming to see you and a particular sound that they're used to. If you're walking into a KFC and they're serving McDonald's, that's not what customers expect. If you're a hip hop DJ and you're playing EDM, man, you gotta shut down your doors and rebrand altogether. I will argue, however, the moniker open format DJ does give you some license to be a little bit of both, and it's a good way to brand yourself. If you say open format, it means that you're willing to take risks and read your audience, and that in itself could be your very own brand. On to the next, my personal favorite, use of technology, man. I'll tell you, radio programmers, they use sophisticated software to schedule music and manage playlists and analyze listener trends. Yes, I know there was a day when DJs would sit there putting records on and putting commercials on by hand, but over time, <laughs> technology allowed us to be a lot more open and free. And I, I think that's so fun for the DJ in us all, both clubs, weddings, and radio. Leveraging DJ software to plan your sets in advance, ensuring a, a smooth flow and the ability to adapt to the crowd's mood without missing a beat. Think about what you have in your arsenal, much like a radio programmer. Serato DJ Pro, Rekordbox, Tractor, these can all help you manage your music library efficiently, just like those FM and Sirius XM jocks. And it doesn't matter what kind of DJ you are, new gear is awesome. <laughs> Something that's so universal for all types of DJ, interaction and engagement. Interaction in radio isn't just about talking, it's about creating a connection with the audience, often through stories and shout outs and engaging content between songs. Enhance your sets with live interactions. Don't just push play on the music. Use the mic to add this personal touch. Dedicate songs, make shout outs, share brief stories or observations that resonate with the crowd in that moment. I'm telling you, this personal engagement can turn a good set into a really unforgettable experience. So by integrating the strategic and analytical side of radio, into the dynamic responsive world of live DJing, you can dramatically enhance your performances, whether you're controlling a vibe in a club or maybe creating lifetime memories at a wedding. These radio derived insights can help you set apart yourself as a DJ, not only by playing music, but 
truly crafting an experience. I hope you get out there and pick up all you can from anything you hear on the radio. Maybe bring it to your clubs and see if they work well. Those top 40 stations, they know what they're playing. And I will mention, when it comes to the playlist, we've already got that covered for you. As all we do is fuse the insights of charts and data into our crates. So, so many other videos on that on this channel. The playlists are almost an afterthought at this point because we are simply a community of DJs who love talking about music. And even with your input in these crates in our community, it really does help the future DJ no matter which direction they decide to take. Give our playlist a spin. Seven days free right now. You can find the link in the comments. And if you like this video, hey, I realize we have a lot of lurkers and not enough subscribers, so it would really mean a lot to me, my efforts in this channel, if you could hit subscribe. Put a one in the chat on the way out the door. One in the comments here on YouTube. <laughs> my name is Aaron Trailer with the Crate Hackers. Happy hacking.